Happy, sad, afraid, relaxed. Can you read your dog as well as they read you? How to read dog, Purina. All about pets. Dogs are constantly communicating how they're feeling. Learning to understand your dog's feelings will help deepen your bond and make your life together so much better. We met with pet care expert Lorna Winter and colleague John Murphy to look at some examples of dog body language. <laughs> we have a dog. That dog looks like he's absolutely in love with the person who's giving him attention. <laughs> you can see he's really happy because his eyes are half closing, like he's falling asleep, and his ears are nice and relaxed. Yeah, he's very happy. Next one. <laughs> That's how I want to be all the time. Yeah, that yeah. is a really happy, relaxed dog. He's lying back in the owner's arms, belly up in the air. That means that they're really comfortable and safe to have their tummy exposed. No, that's a very uncomfortable little dog. Quite anxious, quite afraid. Its whole body is shaking. Its ears are coming back to its head. Obviously, it's restrained, so it probably feels like it hasn't got an option to move away. If I saw a human doing that, I would know I needed to go over and speak to them and ask them what is wrong. See, that seems like it's quite similar. Yeah, the dog is trembling like the last one we saw. Its ears are back. When you can see the whites of its eyes looking up and looking around, that's that's an animal that's, that's quite distressed and it's licking his lips. And licking is a clear sign of anxiousness if they've not just eaten food. Ooh. I don't like this one at all. What do you think's going on there? I'm caught between him being scared of something mm. and almost trying to be over defensive because he's afraid of it. Dogs go through different stages of their responses. He's already given some signals with his ears being laid back, but whatever it is that's happening is continuing to come towards him. Yeah. So then he's gone into his second line there, which is the rising of the lips, the showing of the teeth. That's a really clear sign. Do not come any closer. So that's the final bit of escalation. Yeah. There's nothing after that apart from a bite apart or an attack. Apart from a bite, yes. Mm. Next one. There's no sound, but I can actually hear that video. <laughs> That's a hard one, if I'm honest. It could be barking in excitement because there's something happy that's coming towards it. Its tail is up, its ears are pretty well forward, but it's clearly frustrated probably that it can't get to whatever's there and that's why it's constantly barking. That's not a happy dog. That dog oh, is... Oh, that breaks my heart. He's by a door so he either wants to be let out or he's waiting for someone to come yeah. home. He doesn't look like he wants to get out to go toilet or go play because he's sitting down very frustrated by the fact he's been left alone and doesn't know how to cope with that frustration, which is unfortunately a very uh, common issue. <laughs> See, that jumping is a sign to me that there's an overabundance of adrenaline. Its ears are back, but it's also wagging its tail in not such a negative way. So I'm finding that yeah. one quite hard to read. It could be that there's an intruder in the garden, that the owner's coming with a food or a toy. It's really hard to say mm. without knowing the, the situation. Facially, I would say he looks quite sad, but the body position is almost verging either towards lethargy or depression. You could say he's sad. I looked at it and thought he's just really chill, but it could also be a depressed dog. Mm. And again, that's where the context comes in. Next. <laughs> There's no ambiguity for me there. Yeah, his tail is wagging, his mouth is like right open and his ears are really up and it's just bouncing all over the place. That's a really happy dog. Now these two, they look like they're fighting. I'm looking at that thinking that the dog on the left is being really playful and the dog on the right is maybe not up for it quite so much. <laughs> um, We've all been there. And then in comes the third dog and he's like diffusing the situation a little bit. I would have expected that to aggravate it rather than diffuse the situation. When you bring another player into it, the whole dynamics change. This up dog here on the right is thinking, oh, now there's another player in the game, what's my approach? Oh, they look like they're making friends. <laughs> <laughs> and when I look at this, I think the Labrador for me is a bit full on. You suddenly see the little dog kind of back off a little bit because he's straight oh, in his yeah. face, all that big heavy body. You think about how tiny that dog is. I would like to see that a little bit calmer. I always say with dogs, you know, go for the three second rule. Maximum allow your dogs to interact and greet each other for three seconds because then it gets a bit unpolite. Okay. Playtime, surely. The one on the right went almost down into a play bow. In comes his friend. A little lick of the lips there, just not quite sure. Do I want to play? Don't I want to play? Yes, I want to play. Yeah. So he's put that paw over his head and yeah, I'm up for this. That looks to me to be playing, verging on fighting. What you've got there are two puppies who haven't quite yet learned proper, appropriate social behaviour in play. But this is how they learn. Both of them keep going back in. Yeah. So, you know, if one of the dogs keeps going back in, then they're clearly up for the playtime. Yeah. 
Mm. That dog is under duress, almost frozen in fear. That dog on top is mm. showing all its teeth. It's doing that angry behavior that we saw before. And the dog on the bottom, as you say, completely frozen. He's trying to be as submissive as possible. And that's his way of saying, just go away and leave me alone. It's not nice to look at, actually. No. That's nice to look oh, at. Look at that. It's a big hug. They're just best mates playing in the snow. Even though there's quite a difference in size, they're playing really well. Lots of nice, relaxed, happy behaviour there. OK, just to let them get on with it, leave yeah. them to it until they're done. I don't see anything there that makes me think that I need to interfere or, or stop playtime. It's really important for dogs to socialise because that's how they understand and how they learn. Yeah. Um, and that social interaction just in general make them a better dog. Learning to read your dog better will greatly improve your relationship, but also help you be a better dog owner. Keep learning. Keep practicing. Any questions? Contact our team of experts for free advice.